everyone, welcome again into this new video and oh my god it's so good to be back. Uh, we finally moved into our new house and I'm in my new studio right now and woo, it's so exciting everything. I really miss doing art and uh, it was horrible to be away from arting, doing this these videos and like it's almost been two months since my last one. So yeah, I'm really excited and I hope all of you are too. And um, yeah, in today's video I'm going to uh, demonstrate a little bit how I sculpt my feathers because I had some questions from people who asked me how do you sculpt your feathers and can you show that to us and because apparently there aren't many tutorials around about that so yeah I'm going to give it a try but sculpting tiny things in front of the camera is a bit hard so I hope it's going to be a bit clear and helpful but here goes nothing hope you enjoy so in today's video I am going to show you how I sculpt my feathers for a little bit and of course I'll try and explain how I do things. Um, so yeah, I got that question and as it happens I have a project which involved a lot of feathers which I'm still working on so I thought maybe I can use that to uh, demonstrate this. So I've got this, I think it's called the Conure, I'm not sure if I say it right. Uh, it is a commission for a private client and um, yeah it has a lot of feathers let's see if I can get the lighting a bit right because well maybe I should zoom it out a little filming sculptures is a really hard thing especially when you have to sculpt so yeah um, this guy already has a lot of feathers well, I can't really see it here, because gosh, it's dark here. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I already done a good portion of the back. And uh, the reason why I started with the back side is because of the way the, uh, the feathers layer and overlap. Um, I could start at the head, but then I would have to start at the neck and build all the way up to the to the beak but then later I will find a problem how to get to the, the feathers underneath the already done layer to sit properly and you most likely end up with a weird looking seam here so yeah it works best to just start at the end of things and yeah I'm pretty much halfway I would say um, the wings look a bit funny maybe because well, these are just the, the flight feathers. I still have to do the other part because the wings are folded. And I'm planning to use a bit of this. Um, I'm not really sure how it's called, but it is awfully handy. It's super thin and super bendable. So, And because of the texture, it will grab the clay very well. And this is a bit the, the rough idea. To have this part on top so um, the end I'll just put a lot of layers of feathers here and then you have the completed wing um, but we're not going to do that today I'll just show you how to do these little feathers and how to layer them exactly um, so yeah first things first you're just gonna need yourself a bit of clay. Um, I am using a mixture of the pink Super Sculpey, which is, as you can see, hold on, a bit flashy in color. And then I mix it with Super Sculpey Firm, which is gray. And on its own, I don't like it because it's very brittle. It, and very hard condition but once you mix it with the pink stuff 
it is great. And apparently Super Sculpey now sells um, the mixture of the two in one brick. Which I bought recently but still have to try out. So hopefully it's just as good as my own mixture. That will mean it will save me a lot of time mixing it myself. But um, here's my own own homemade mixture. Um, so what I'll do is I take a piece off um, and I make a bunch of individual small feathers. I just rip small parts off and there we go. If they are too big I can always make them smaller later. Mm. Well, let's let's do it with this. Um, yeah, then I'll just make little balls of clay, and then I squash them between my fingers until you have these flat little things. And I'll just do that to the others as well. And there we go. This one might be a bit big, but... Okay. Well, I think I'll just use these. Uh, let's see, maybe I should zoom in a little. And then I'll just curl continue on the belly of the parrot. I hope it's sharp. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is, uh, I already started a new layer here, so yeah, what you do is you just basically put the feather on top of the old layers. It doesn't matter if it overlaps the one next to it a bit. That just doesn't matter. I suppose with the real real thing it happens to. Um, when you place a feather on top of the other, um, place them sort of like in between two feathers. Not like um, directly on top of the other one, because then you will end up with a very, a very unrealistic looking uh, feather pattern and you just have a whole bunch of rows with feathers and it won't look real so uh, like for a bit of randomness and that looks a lot better than when you like would draw or sculpt the hairs all in one direction then you just will look terribly fake um yeah so how do i detail this i start off in the middle i'm using a ribbon tool by the way which i really like for small detailing, but you can also use very cheap Play-Doh plastic stuff as long as it has a sharp edge. Of course you can also use toothpicks, but I'm using a ribbon tool. I think these are the, the mini ones, because you have bigger ones as well. Um, so yeah, I make this stretched V-mark in the middle, which should be the pen of the feather. And then at the sides I go make little streaks which should be the uh, individual hairs of the feather to give it a bit of the feathery realistic texture. Um, then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And there we go. A couple more. And then we're there, and as you can see, we have a nice looking feather here. Um, at least I hope you can see, because there's a lot of shadow here, and a stupid little fly that wants some screen time too. Um, and well, now it looks kind of good, but to give it a bit more realism, I'm going to make little gaps here by slowly wiggling my ribbon tool in between making some of these deeper so 
you get a bit more diversion in there and a bit more realism if you indent one of the under underlaying ones you can always go over them again and fix it so that's not a real problem as long as your clay is soft you can always go back and fix things that's why i prefer to work with polymer clay instead with air dry because when you work with air dry clay you're basically running against the clock and that's very stressful and I am I always like to go back and um, change things later uh, I'm just not sure if everything can be seen properly because uh, it's dark winter winter is coming and stupid fly go away <laughs> Horrible, horrible fly. Um, so let's not, you know, let's add another one. Um, so um, again, I'm going to put it on top of the other layer and in between two feathers. So you get this random pattern. Um, then we do this whole thing again. It's Pretty simple actually because this is all there really is to it. It's just rinse and repeat actually. Um, and yeah, it can be a bit tedious I guess, but you just go for the end result and it will be worth it. All the trouble. Because really it is there's nothing to it, it's just a whole lot of work doing all these individual feathers. But I suppose sculpting fur is just as tedious. <laughs> but fun as well, I guess. Just whenever you feel you're getting tired, you just need to take a break. Go have a walk or something. Well, in my case, I can't do this all day anyway because I have a full time job next to this, so yeah. Well, maybe one day I'll do this full time. Who knows? <laughs> It'd be cool. We'll definitely be able to make more videos in a month that way, but who knows? Maybe in the future. So, like on the other one, we're doing these side things for the texture, making some a bit deeper. And if you're the edge of the feather is a bit lost, you can always fix that by pushing your tool against the edge and create a new edge. So we've added a second feather and I guess I'll just do another one and I'll just add it on top of here again in between and then you just slowly uh, get a feather bird instead of a weird grey naked one <laughs> and yeah again all these little details are being sculpted in see there's just nothing to it you just when you look at the whole thing it looks very complicated but it is not um, at least this part isn't with the wings and the tail it's a whole different story those really gave me a lot of headaches because they're just really complex things they you just have to understand how they work how the feathers lay on top of each other and yeah especially when they are bent they just look a whole lot different than when the wings are spread and with the tail you can't always see how how the feathers are layered so it is wise to use a lot of referen referential photos to see how it works preferably from all sides underneath on top and yeah sometimes clients can't provide you with all the photos that you need but then you could always try and find more pictures um, on the internet, of course. 
and use these as a guide. Um, yeah, so our parrot has a bit more feathers. Um, then, if you're wondering how you should do uh, the longer ones, um, if they're like sticking out and not supporting on the entire thing, and it's wise to use something underneath as a as an armature. You've got multiple choices with that. You can use iron wire. Um, you can either use aluminium foil, and like I've done here, you can make in the shape of a feather, try to keep it as thin as possible because feathers are thin and if you have a very thick armature it just looks like a very massive uh, feather and that's just not what you want unless of course that's your intention but and then you c cover this with clay and again um, texture it like you would the little ones and another option is like I showed before to use this um, also very thin, very bendable, maybe even prefer more preferable over the foil, but the foil is more um, more affordable than this stuff, because it's more expensive. But because of the texture, it grabs the clay really well, and you could texture it. I actually used it for the wings here, and uh, on the tail, I just used the the aluminium foil um yeah so if you have a larger feather let's see zoom in there we go let's see if we have a i'm just quickly gonna draw out a feather here just to show you um so yeah, if you texture this, of course, again, you're going to start out with where the feather pen would be. If you even call it, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a bird expert, so don't hold this against me. And um, yeah, then you go at those little details again. It's uh, good to have a bit of a curve in there, because that's how those feathers naturally work so don't go like this because that won't look very good just nice little curvy lines and you can put them as close to each other as you want as possible the larger your work is, the more details you can put in there. The smaller your work is, the harder it is to detail. Unless you have very precise small tools. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty much how you would texture a larger feather. Um, and then of course you can make some deeper... Mess with the hair a bit. And the middle thing is a bit lost, but you can always edit that as long as your clay is soft. So, yeah. On an actual piece, this would of course look better than working on a flat piece of clay, but it's just to show the gist of it. So yeah, that's actually how you would do a larger feather. Um, but on an actual uh, 3D piece, it would look something like this. And that's on the wing. Also, pay in mind that once you're doing all those feathers, it's very easy to go on automatic mode and make each feather the same shape and the same size but um, keep close uh, eye on your reference photos because on some places like on the chest area they're pretty much all the same size shape but like on the wings they all have different sizes and, and shapes especially on the top part 
and um, the more up you go on the neck and the head yeah it's so hard to aim here the the smaller the feathers will become so you have to pay close attention to that otherwise again you'll end up with a very strange end product um, so yeah that's pretty much it for today um, I hope it was helpful especially for the ones who have been asking about this and um, of course if you have any more questions about this or anything else you can ask me in the comment section also if you have any suggestions for any future uh, future videos please let me know and I might consider doing something with it um, so yeah I hope you enjoyed leave me a like if you enjoyed this video and um, hopefully I'll see you in the next one thank you for watching and have a good one.